right. this video, you will see an attempt at robbery and a fight from my spring. I stroke it. I break it. I make suspicious noises. We stress test the suspension. A dude catches on fire. And other ridiculous things. But first... So I will now present what I believe is the ultimate OEM budget sport suspension for the E46. So some of the information that influenced the decisions on what to buy came from a E46 guru friend. And a lot of the information comes from this ZHP Mafia forum thread. Essentially on this thread there is everything you need to know about the OEM E46 suspension from the lowest tiers to the best tier M Tech dampers. So I used a combination of this thread and the knowledge from E46 gurus to build what in my opinion might be the best E46 budget sports inspired suspension. I will not go too deep into the whole lore situation around the E46 suspension but what you must know is that the ultimate OEM suspension has been discontinued. The MTech dampers are no longer a thing. And the replacement OEM damper from Saks is somewhat a mix of the high tier MTech sport suspension and the slightly lower but still high tier M sport suspension. So the dampers that I bought sit somewhere between M sport and M tech. So essentially the best you can get right now, that is OEM from Saks. So for the fronts, I got the 317-541 Saks shock absorber, which is the aforementioned between M Sport and M Technique best option out there. And it costs just under 100 euro per shock absorber. So for the rear end, this is slightly less budget because you can go with the M Sport suspension on the rears. But I decided to go with the M3 E36 rear shocks. This is a direct swap with the E46 rear end and it's significantly better than any E46 rear dampers because these are thicker and bigger, stronger. They're just overall better in every single way. Best part is they're not expensive. At the time of the purchase, they were only 72 euros for the pair. So this is where I deviate from the thread. This is where I use the uh, elder knowledge. I have gone with the h and lowering springs, which go minus 35 on the front and minus 20 on the back, which is lower than the suggested IBAC Pro Kit. The reason is I just wanted to have a lower car. And this is the most expensive part, coming at around 140 euros. I always had to buy a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, bump stop bearings, rubber buffers, and uh, most importantly for the top mounts on the rear end, I just bought the accompanying E36 M3 top mount. And for the fronts, I went with the M Sport M Technique front top mount socks on boat. So the cost breakdown is 1,178 Bulgarian levs or 602 euros, which is not a lot for a brand new suspension. So now, please enjoy me struggling to change the suspension and including a little bit of a bolt snap, which is not fun. I just cleaned everything here. Uh, got the guide going. I'm going to start with the rears. We're starting with the driver's side. It's always nice to find things like rust, more rust and the sound sound isolation just being fucked somebody has been here also it looks like a lot of burning maybe the car has been on fire at some point in its life just these two bolts need to be removed so we just had to do the most ridiculous thing to get the car to lift on the rear end i jacked the front right with the rest jacked the front put the jack stand in the back then lowered the front and the car just tilted just enough for the wheel to lift off just slightly. Uh, we got a new tool. I've got some penetrating oil just in case. This, uh, this suspension is quite oiled so I'm betting the bolts are not happy. Hopefully we don't snap any bolts. So I've got slight pressure on the spring. I've blasted the shit out of the bolt. We can only hope for, for the best now. To have more leverage, I need to go underneath the car. But because it's a tight, tight fit, it's a quite interesting 
quite interesting procedure to get in here. Now the leaving of the hole is also quite entertaining. <laughs> Only the most scuffed situations here at the Zerga channel. So as you can see this thing is seen hell, absolutely diabolical. Look at the state of this thing. This is supposed to be up here but it's just, oh my lord, look here. This thing is absolutely fucked. Uh, <laughs> nobody, nothing. Absolutely nothing, dude. There is nothing here. If this thing is not original, I'll be I'll be damned. This is the new one. This is mu a much thicker version. This is the M3 shock from an E36. It's hard to see, but it is significantly thicker. The original E46 Hem Sport M Technique shocks are not very good. Being the very professional mechanic that I am, I'm using a torque wrench to get the bolt to exactly 100 newton meters as that's the spec. As is tradition, whenever I work on cars, simple day jobs turn into multi-day jobs. As you can see, the BMW is tucked in into the garage, filled to the brim with parts. First set is on. You can see it much shinier than the old one. Uh, it's the next day. It took us all day to fix that one. Uh, hopefully now we are better prepared for the second one. I'm going to be filming a bit more. Uh, it was eventful. You used this jack to compress the trailing arm so the, the spring can go in. And, well, uh, yeah, nice one. That's all on me. Everything is laid out, the tools. And here is the new uh, shock, the dust cover bump stop. This is all that was left of the old bump stop. This car was running zero bump stop. This was all that was left. This is absolutely ridiculous, okay. This versus this, yeah. Uh, I've got these, these are used, but they are perfect condition, almost. You know, they're pretty good condition. M3 top hats. This bolt, quite problematic on this side. It took us probably an hour just fighting this thing, trying different different parts. I did fuck up one of these. Uh, this one is also, well, on its way out, if, it, if it's visible. But I did blast the shit out of this since yesterday, quite a few times with the penetrating oil. So I hope uh, this will work even with the, the machine, because last time I had to do it all by, by hand. <laughs> so to put it in perspective this took us 30 40 minutes of just fighting with a breaker bar and then just like five five seconds now i'm already feeling much better about this on this side than the other one there's just two bolts 13 mil in there there's a lot of sound deadening that's very dead here There we go. Let's see if this thing actually compresses. Oh my. It actually moves. That's interesting. It's not going too quick, but it's... It's not completely dead. Plus, as you can see, it has almost a bump stop. <laughs> Quite interesting. Because we don't care about the, the old shock, we're going to just grab it by the, the struts. Oh. 
So apparently there are these little washers. Uh, the other did not have this, and this one is completely dead. And I've not bought new washers, so well, YOLO. This is how quick a shock should be. The difference in the strut is quite significant. And the body itself, much thicker on the M3. A washer should go on here, but I don't have one. So we kind of fucked everything up here a bit. This thing I don't think is an issue being fucked, but the nut itself is not in perfect condition. There we go, a very unprofessionally assembled shock. This was the easy part, now the hard part, removing the spring. <laughs> We got a smaller jack. <laughs> Although the old shocks are Monroe, if it can be seen, uh, which is a shit, shit tier brand the springs have the m sport em technique or m sport markings which makes them i think oem Oh. <sighs> These actually have lines on them from where the the springs have sat. This has a lot of more a lot more coils on them. This does not fit too well though. <laughs> Чакай, ние не трябваше ли първо сложим гумата? Чанта трябва да се Oh, 
Ще е малко. Ай, чакай. Да, много леко само трябва да проваш. Да. Torque wrench set to 100. Give it one more just for fun. That's it. That should be the rear done. The time has come to do the front end. So as you saw, I fucked it. I broke the bolt. It sheared in half. So there goes the DIYness out the window. I don't have the tools or the knowledge or expertise to extract that bolt. But this is a very peak moment. <laughs> I should not be laughing. The dude caught on fire from the blowtorch. But yes, I had to enlist the help of these uh, mechanics, so to say. They're not really particularly mechanics. Then. Uh, in a lot of cases I had more knowledge than them, but they had the knowledge to do this kind of shit, which I did not. So what you saw a second ago was my hub on the floor. They removed everything to actually get to the bolt and uh, disassemble everything. And here, on the other side, I decided not to risk it and let them do the work. They are using a massive breaker bar and a hammer going clockwise and counterclockwise to loosen the bolt up so we don't shear this one as well. This is the driver's side damper, as you can see, dead. Uh, removing the spring in a very risky way. And this is what I meant when I said that these guys are not real mechanics. They're just dudes that kind of work on cars in the small town that I was whilst uh, doing this risky job. Passenger damper actually works. And you can see the pure confusion of the dudes on what the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> oy, oy, oy. After all was said and done, well, after all was done, this is the rear, these are the fronts. We have a few interesting things. First off, both passenger side shocks are not dead, while driver side. Oh, very easy to compress and there's nothing obviously dirty rust rusting underneath dead all the passenger side although it has rust on the strut itself on two spots less rust on the shaft and it takes much more effort to compress this And it comes back. Same for the rears. This one, heavily rusted. Almost no effort. Okay, maybe a little bit of effort. Oh my god. I think this is just so internally broken, it's just even hard to compress. It was very hard to decompress. Yeah. It just like stops in a few... Oh. Yeah, this is not only blown, this is actively exploding right now. And then the passenger one. Oh. There we go. Oh. Well, it was rebounding before. Yes. When Max uh, compressed, it seems it doesn't want to completely rebound. There is something still in here, although, again, practically blown. And we continue with the interesting things. These springs are for sure OEM, or at least, no, they have to be OEM, because they, these are the, uh, these are the sport suspension markings for the fronts. 
I'm unsure if there is a difference between M Sport and just Sport Suspension Springs. I think the difference is in the dampeners. It is the same thing for the other one as well. And the funny thing is, this one is more compressed than this one, meaning we were running lower on one side. Same goes for the rears. These are the sport suspension markings, and one side is slightly more compressed. I imagine the more compressed sides are on the driver's side because that's where we're mostly blown. But this is not where it all ends. If we look at the dust boot and the bump stop on the front, they are BMW branded. So either brand new from the dealer OEM or original. You see? Not in perfect condition, but like not the worst thing ever. It's mostly sludge. There are breakings. There is some breaking on the plastic, composite plastic, whatever the fuck this is. And it's BMW branded. Same goes for the dust boot. The dust boot, also BMW branded. This is the other one. Both BMW branded still. <laughs> And then get this, the top hats, also BMW branded. So either somebody replaced these with original from the dealer, or they came, came the car came with these. Plus you can see the the bearings. This bearing is not too happy, while this one is a bit more happy. You see, it just spins much more freely. This one is just shit. So yeah, this car has been well overdue for a new suspension. This is what's left of the rear driver bump stop. Absolutely ridiculous that this is all that's left. The passenger one has a bit more to it, but you can see it's just absolutely destroyed. And I wonder if somebody uh, cut these for, to maybe lower the car or something. I don't know. The top hats are in, well, not the greatest condition again bmw they are both branded bmw quite possibly original the rear dust boots don't appear to have any markings uh brand wise so these might have been changed because the rear ones the rear shocks are uh well oh, there it is the rear shocks are monroe the blown shock is a Sox. So Sox is the OEM damper maker on the E46, but the the other side is just unbranded BMW stamped logo. So this might be either OEM replaced or OEM with the car. While the Sox definitely still it has a BMW logo, so I'm not too sure. But these definitely. Or not from the same <laughs> time on this car and I'm pretty sure these are not original because the car as per all the information online the car should have the M Sport M Technique sport suspension while these come from the from the OE number only show to be normal sport suspension which is quite poverty so yeah this is quite interesting we have so many little mysteries about this car